One clear goal of the nationwide protest is to live a better Nigeria, in a better Nigeria. And tonight, our focus is how socioeconomic data can be more effectively used to reduce the economic hardship and improve governance. Babajide Ogunsan, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's data analyst is here in Abuja studios to share more insight about this. Hello, Babajide. It's good to have you on the news at 10. Uh, some say that statisticians... Yeah. Some say the statisticians like you provide the oxygen countries need for planning. But before we go into the role of statistics in reducing hardship, what is your take on the president's speech earlier today? With reference to the president's speech, there are two years that I want you to quickly write down, 1942 and 1952. And I'll get back later to the importance of these two years, 1942 and 19. 52. Well, on this speech, um, yes, compared to the speech that happened under President Buhari during the NSAS protest, this speech was longer, 20 minutes, compared to 11-minute speech President Buhari gave. We remember that under President Buhari during the NSAS protest, he sat down during this speech, and I'll talk later about the significance of President Tinumbu standing up to, to speak. But well, beyond all of this, and before we go much later into the context of this speech and thoroughly analyze it, the number one question on the lips of Nigerians is, did this speech resonate and connect with the majority of Nigerians? And at this point, I'd like us to take a look at the structure of Nigeria's demography, because it then allows us to understand who the Nigerian government and the president should be speaking to. Again, I talked about those years, 1942, the year former president... Buhari was born 1952, the year President Tinumbu um, was born. Both presidents are classified under demography as baby boomers. Based on their date of birth, they represent only 7% of Nigeria's 240 million population. Looking at the style and wording of this speech, looking at the environment in which this speech happened, and looking at how the president delivered this speech, it does seem that the president really did not connect with the millennials and the, what we call the Gen Z, the Generation Z, who represents the significant majority of the population. Again, President, former President Buhari and President Tinumbu's age category fall within the baby boomers. And it did seem that most of this speech, the style, the delivery, will have connected more with those who classify as baby boomers and those Generation X. But again... Baby boomers and Generation X represent only 20% of the population. And that is the challenge with this speech. Yes, there was good intent. However, the question is 80% of today's Nigerians are classified as Generation Y, Millennials, and Generation Z, Z. And this speech significantly did not resonate strongly with them rate or the GDP rate, what other tools can government actually use to be proactive in economic planning and even now ask, will this new minimum wage significantly help in any way? Well, on this, there are three quick things I want to talk about. The first is on the minimum wage. There's really no such thing as a minimum wage anymore in Nigeria, and I'll explain why. We remember in April 2019 when President Buhari signed the minimum wage of 30,000 naira. Now in August we've seen a 70,000 naira minimum wage. But not going by my statistics, going by the statistics of the National Bureau of Statistics. They say that between April 2019, when that minimum 30,000 naira minimum wage was passed, and today, inflation rates approximately 165 percent. And in simple terms. You are better off earning a 30,000 naira minimum wage in April 2019 than earning a 70,000 naira minimum wage in August 2024. So the minimum wage in reality is an illusion. The second and perhaps more important point, and I would like you to carefully listen to this, is that the cost of a minimum living in Nigeria today is at its maximum. And that is the challenge Nigerians face. The cost of a minimum living is at its maximum. Now, what is the solution? The solution is we need to focus more on more practical data and theoretical data. And I'll give you an instance of this. We remember our musical professors in school. They understood the theory of music. 
However, what sort of songs do we listen and dance to? The Bonner Boys, the Whiskeys, the David O's, the King Sonia Days, and of course, the little Inca Winos. They were not music professors. They sang real music. By no stretch of the imagination am I discounting the relevance of, of theoretical eco um, economic principles in Nigeria. However, we need to now more than ever focus on real practical indicators. One way of measuring this is for us to take a look at how much do Nigerians spend? What is the minimum cost of a healthy diet in Nigeria? And again, the National Bureau of Statistics provides us some information. Looking at Lagos State, for instance, they say, as at the beginning of this year, the minimum cost of a healthy diet for an adult family of four was 122,000 naira. That has increased now to 184,000 naira. Look at Abuja. As at January, the minimum monthly cost, again, these are minimum costs for a healthy diet for an adult family of four in Abuja. At the beginning of the year, 106,000 naira per month. That has grown to 167,000 naira per month. Again, look at what's going on in Kano. At the beginning of the year, it required approximately 78,000 naira minimum monthly cost for a healthy diet for a family of four living in Kano. That has grown to more than 100,000 naira. That is one instance of real practical data. And though, yes, um, the theoretical data still remain important in Nigeria, we have now gradually moved into a season, into an era where local, states, and federal governments need to focus more on practical data. And of course, we are here to develop mm -hmm. all those statistical models that can assist them to focus more on the practical data. But is there any evidence that states are now using the extra money they now receive from the Federation to improve security and welfare? And it, it also depends on first, do you agree if the states are, have received or are receiving more money or are they really receiving less? And there are two perspectives, looking at it from the Naira perspective and the dollar perspective. So I'd like us to take a look at that question. Are states really receiving more money from the Federation account? Because it's all an illusion, the illusion of more money. Here's what I mean. In the first six months of 2022, Northern Nigeria received 521 billion naira. In the first six months of this year, that has grown to 1 trillion naira. That seems to be a significant jump. Same thing, Southern Nigeria, first six months of 2022, 849 billion naira. First six months of this year, 1.6 trillion naira. If you look at those two periods, January 2022 to January 2024, it makes you seem and believe that, yes, Northern Nigeria has significantly gotten more money compared to 2022, and Southern Nigeria has significantly gotten more money compared in, 20, in this year compared to 2022. But that is if you focus on just the Naira perspective. The Naira perspective creates an illusion of more money. If, however, you look at the dollar perspective, which is in front of us, you realize that 2022 compared to 2024, in dollar terms, the states had significantly more money. What I mean in simple terms, Anne, is that the purchasing power parity, the purchasing power of the Naira as is significantly reducing. So in Naira terms, the states, yes, are seeing a lot more money from the Federation account. Or can this Naira purchase things that they would have done in 2022? And in the final analysis, it's now a dozen years, past four decades, exactly around this period, the great legend Fela Kuti was about to release a song, When Trouble Sleep, Yanga Go Wake In Nigeria today, trouble is sleeping, and it's important that the government doesn't wake it up. At the very least, the government should give this trouble a softer bed and perhaps a much softer pillow. Anne. All right. Thank you very much. Um, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's Data Analyst, Babajide Ogunso. Thanks a lot for your exciting view on the news at 10. Pleasure is all mine, Anne.